Hi, welcome to the All Things LGBTQ interview show, where we interview LGBTQ guests who are making important contributions to our communities. All Things LGBTQ is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hi, everybody. I'm here with Cheryl Finfrock, Finfrock and Eva Weiss, who are um, luminaries in the artistic world. Um, it is my honor to interview them because they have an exciting new project they're here to talk with you about, to talk with us about. Um, but before we go into the formalities of their biographies, which are very illustrious, let me ask you how long you've been friends and how you met. Um, who wants to take it? Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we uh, started following each other on Facebook because we were mutual admirers of each other's work. I'm going to guess that was 2022. That's my best guess. Sound, does that sound about yeah. right? Yeah. yeah okay. And so that's our, our meeting ground, frankly, is virtual. <laughs> and, I love Facebook. Yeah. But, but, and, and the circle of my partner, Lynn's New York friends, where, you know, that's the ultimate origination. Would you, yeah, so it's kind of yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, Lynn, Lynn Messenger and I go way, way back, like to the old wild days. I knew her from then. And so I guess that's how Cheryl and I became Facebook friends, you know, because we were connected in that way. And that then as a result we started liking each other's images and um you know we connected through our our artwork so you know rest is history there you yeah. go i love facebook it's often maligned but i think it's very useful oh that kind of people yeah. together um let me start with more formal introductions of each of you if i may um start with eva who has made a previous appearance on the show. So I have some inside information about her um, that we'll re rehash here. But Eva grew up in Philadelphia and received her BFA from the Rochester Institute of Technology in 1971. So there's a Rochester connection on, on one oh. side anyway. Yes. Her work has been exhibited and published internationally since 1972. She received a Creative Arts Program Services Grant in 1976. Her creative collaboration with Split Bridges performance troupe, Peggy Shaw, Lois Weaver, Deb Margolin has been exhibited extensively in New York City, Amsterdam, and London between 1984 and 2020. Eva's still life work has been featured in many editions of Vogue Italia from 1987 to 1991, and let's put in a plug for your old colleagues, Lois Weaver and um, Peggy Shaw. Uh, Lois Weaver and uh, Peggy Shaw have just been awarded an Obie for Lifetime Achievement. Yes, is that have. correct? That's a cause for a celebration right there. Yes, definitely. Eva has documented creative dance and performance artists since 1970. Um, she's created a body of work that focus on, focuses on performance artists on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Uh, this work has appeared on four book covers, Butch Femme 1995, Intimate Acts 1997, and Must in 2008. The complete body of her work on Lois Weaver, including the back and front cover, will appear in the definitive book on the artist. Has that book come out yet? Yes, it has. I can't wait to read it. What's it's, the title? It's actually been out for a while. Um, it's called The Only Way Home is Through the Show. I see that. And it includes images from 35 years of photographic collaboration with the performance artist, writer, and director Lois Weaver. The Museum of the City of New York. This is very um, illustrious, Eva. The Museum of the City of New York featured four of Eva's images 
of wild performers at the exhibit Gay Gotham 2017. And I was able to see those um, photographs and really pretty good. Um, a series of your photographs of lesbian performers was included in the Julia Margaret Cameron exhibit in Barcelona in 2019. Recently rediscovered is a series of portraits made by Eva of Bill T. Jones and Ernie Zane, shot in 1971. Two of these images are included in the documentary, Can You Bring It? Bill T. Jones and D. Man in the Waters. And that was a wonderful film. I have to confess, Eva, you introduced me to them and I'm so much smarter for having had that interview with you. And it's really a great film. I recommend it to all audience members. Now, Cheryl is a native, Cheryl Finfrock is a native Texan from Dallas and a San Francisco transplant, presently painting in Austin. You know, I was born in Houston. Oh. Wow. <laughs> but we left when I was a baby. Um, wow, quick. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Herman Hospital, which is pretty big. Oh, yeah, big. yeah. Uh, but we digress. She, uh, Cheryl has enjoyed traveling and exhibiting in New York City, the West Coast, and in several European cities, including Berlin, Paris, and Sofia. Uh, Trinity University graduate in both art and literature, she explores the figure with its awkwardness, anonymity, and universality, creating a narrative steeped in the tradition of Texas storytelling. And I'd like to pause here and ask you to explain the tradition of Texas storytelling. Well, you know, it's that the story gets told. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, like kind of a more narrative and long-winded way of speaking. Just the idea of to speak is to tell a story that's always inside the mix of dialogue for better <laughs> or worse. <laughs> I think of Molly Ivins and Ann Richards and sure, some sure. of those wonderful women rock on tours from Texas. Do they partake in the Texas tradition of storytelling? Oh, I think they are the actual <laughs> definition of it. <laughs> so you say, I like the idea that stories told with images can communicate silently, but not necessarily quietly. I love that. Oh, I regard the picture plane as a stage and those who occupy it as characters of place and person. Very enlightening. So um, now that the audience has a clearer sense of um, the interviewees, let me ask you about the operation in com of community in your work. I mean, you're forming kind of a collaborative community with this exhibit. But how has community helped you develop as artists, Eva? Oh, <laughs> that's a hard question for me. Um, well, I can answer it. There's wow. For yeah, I mean, I think in the past, it it um, inspired me more than it does now because I was so immersed in. Um, in the performance community back in the 80s and mostly with uh with wow which is a lesbian um performance group and i was you know i i just lived and breathed and did everything about with wow and that's how i created that body of work and that was that was my community and um so since then i haven't really had a community per se that I that I have been uh creating work from. Um I I am still a portraitist, um, but I I photograph all different types of portraits from different um friends and people in my life. Um, but no no specific community. It's just um sometimes wow people uh I continued working with Split Bridges um, through, you know, through the years, um, but women from WOW it sort of dissipated, um, you know, after the '90s, I say, you know, but I, I have a plan to go back, you know, to some of the WOW girls, like 
today, you know, and who we are today. And um, that's something that I have in in mind. So that's that's about, wonderful. Yeah, that's about all I can think of to say about that. Um, well, a lot has been centered in New York City. Um, yeah. Oh, so you yeah. had the Rochester community. And... Yeah, there was that community. That was a whole different thing. And that mm -hmm. was in the 70s. So a lot of people haven't really seen much of that work, but that that was a whole different inspiration was, um, you know, like my whole uh, group of people that I knew from school, from who I went to school with, a very rich community, the people that I'm still very involved with and very attached to and like friends for life. And yeah, I did a whole a whole body of work the years that I lived in Rochester. Um, that was very different than what I'm doing now. It was very romantic and Victorian and yeah, it had a whole different look to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I often ask writers if they have writing groups and so forth. I think it might be tougher for photographers and painters, but let me ask yeah. Cheryl, how, yeah. how does the sense of community operate in your work? Well, uh, probably in a fairly literal way in that my studio is at uh, Canopy Studios here in Austin, and there are many artists there, and we open up once a month. But I I have done, you know, over time, I've now, now and then uh, had two-person shows that, you know, have been created and so forth. Um and worked with other artists in terms of getting ready for shows. I actually, as you asked this, one kind of major uh, moment has been uh, with a friend of mine that I've had since the 80s. Uh, we call him Snappy Tom uh, here in Texas. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I'd known him since the 80s, but he invited me to go to um, a cooperative uh, gallery and show with him and almost in the Czech Republic in 2005. So that's that's quite, yeah, that's kind of quite a, it was quite a trip. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I would say more from a community is uh, individual relationships and working with other artists and group shows and so forth and where where I'm living and, you know, the opportunity, like again, here in Austin is uh, um, like the studio tours. And when I was in San Francisco, I was very involved in the studio tours as well. So kind of that kind of thing. How long have you lived in Texas? Um, well, I was born here. So let's see. I had 16 years in California. So um, all my life except for 16 years. So yeah, school, all of it. And that would be in San Antonio in, in at Trinity. And mm -hmm. then back and forth to Austin. This is my third time to live in Austin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What made you come back? Well, Lynn like had to sell her place. My partner had to sell her place in New York because it needed to be owner occupied. And we were living, we lived in San Francisco, but that was we very early on in the relationship. Then we uh, lived in Vallejo because that's the only place you could get a house like uh, for a possible purchase, miracle mm -hmm. and that. And she wanted to do that. and. The gay community was essentially buying up Victorians uh, in Vallejo, this population of 110,000 north and east of San Francisco. And I'm not really a small town person. Um, so I, uh, yeah, when she had the opportunity to say, hey, I think, you know, maybe if we'd like to move, we can. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I know I'm not really great. a small town person either. Yeah, so Austin was on the go, it was a pretty obvious go to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're making me laugh because you live in a small town. I know it. And so we travel <laughs> frequently. 
And I have worked in small towns in the past, and that's been my strategy. <laughs> um, how did you have to start your um, artistic careers? I have to tell you, Eva, in her first interview, said that her mother influenced her. Oh, yeah, I remember. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Can you that's tell so us weird. more, Eva? <laughs> What's that? Oh. You didn't know that? Cheryl, you didn't know that about me? Well, I was just actually I was interjecting and going my I would consider my mother my first teacher, my first synchronicity. <laughs> I know. Go. That's what I'm saying. Was your mother an Aquarius by chance? <laughs> Do we have that too? I don't know. She was um July 13th. Is she was birthday. not. But <laughs> oh well. <laughs> But uh, we're, Cheryl and I are both Capricorns, so that's another. I see yeah. another commonality. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're so weird, Hello. both of us. You know, we're both like weird old Capricorns. You know, so that's another thing. But we we really are like, you know, sisters in that way. But what was the question? <laughs> so your mother encouraged you. Oh yeah, yeah. She well, I was a, I I was a graphic artist. I mean, I I did paintings and you know, drawings, and that's what I studied in high school. But I, I was just so interested in photography. Um, my my mother was it was very interested in it when she was a girl, and she got me, um, I used to sit on the dining room floor and just rummage through all these pictures that she had printed herself, like in the, you know, from an old camera that shot, you know, big negatives. And so she taught me how to print and um, things like that. And, you know, by the time I was ready to choose a college, I decided I wanted to go to photography school. And um, that's how I ended up in Rochester because at that time there were very few photography schools that uh, uh, centered on fine art. And there was one that RIT was one of them. And um, she gave you your first Kodak, is that right? Your yeah, mother? they gave me a little uh, point and shoot when I was ten years old, and um, then when I went in, went away to school, they got me a, a single lens reflex Pentax. I was so excited. Remember, weren't there brownie cameras? Yeah, that's what I had. <laughs> there yeah. we go. Uh, the old days. So Cheryl, your mother. Oh uh, yes. You... Well, go ahead. How'd you happen to start painting? Well, I mean, it's a it, it's an interesting story because uh, I always evidently I always drew I you know it was it was just there, but I thought I wanted to go into music, so I took guitar lessons and kind of went that route. And there wasn't like an amazing support for art uh in my school which was terribly unfortunate because things could have taken a different path much quicker but um what my mom when I was a little kid when I was five she was taking painting lessons and she produced like it was more of a she'll say it it was more like you know as a housewife learning to paint to have something over the couch that kind of thing that's what she'll tell me but I'm like but you were good you know, why didn't you keep, she's like, no, you do that. And so I actually, uh, when I was in college, so I would say in adulthood, by the time, you know, essentially by the time I could drink, right? <laughs> no, but actually that was at 18. So for other people, it's <laughs> age 21. But by the time I was 21, uh, I was uh, uh, taking sculpture and had, it was welding and you know i was taking painting as well my mother gave me her uh, old oil paints and that kind of thing but more i know i digress i digress in okay. the tradition but um <laughs> i my kind of like second family my best friend growing up uh they kind of took me in cuz it's a conservative background that I'm from with the Baptist in Dallas, Texas, but the Zaners kind of saw that I could use a little guidance and they, uh, you know, I call him Mr. Z. He was a philosophy professor at SMU, also is 
did a whole lot of medical ethics in um, Vanderbilt, you know, after that, just to, and they lived in New York as well. And, you know, he's taught all over the place. And Mrs. A. June Sainer, she was an artist. So these were enormous influences and specifically, I'll call her June Zayner so I can sound more adult. June, I'd never do that, not even to her <laughs> face. I'm like, Ms. E. <laughs> but it, anyway, she was like a really huge influence. And she said, hey, when you go to Trinity, you, know, you need to study with Phil Abbott. Go take a sculpture class. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. She's like, just do it, Cheryl. Come on, come on. So eventually... I got there. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go take that sculpture class. And that was, that was it. That was it. I was like, let's, okay, let's do it. So, so then the transition from sculpture to painting, how did that Yeah, happen? that I was painting alongside, but I basically went uh, in my early twenties, I graduated and, you know, you've got these big sculptures that nobody wants to live with and you got roommates and people who don't <laughs> want to live with their sculptures. So they, there were a lot of, uh, physical problems with all this. And eventually I kind of worked my way into the wall. I actually literally had welded sculptures and then I'd kind of make them more two-dimensional and then then I started doing these really kind of obsessive drawings that I would turn into paintings and and cut them out of wood and so forth and it just lended its way into painting so yeah it was sculpture uh when I had access to welding tanks and then painting as we move forward and plus the fact is I'm really in love with color. So it's it's a little tricky. It's not impossible with sculpture, but there's more focus for me and my path. There was more focus on color within painting. Having a flat surface uh, lended itself more to color in my case. I love the color in your work. Thank um, you. Do you paint every day? And let me ask you, Eva, how often she works. It's more spontaneous with you, wouldn't, would you say, Eva? Oh, I don't work every day, no. <laughs> What's that? I don't work every day, no. Um, it's a different medium. Yeah. Um, I, let's see. I would I think. watch a lot of movies. <laughs> 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 movies I inspire me. I, you know, like I, I watch a lot of film noir, and then when I'm ready to shoot something, I have that all running around in my head because that's those those visuals are what inspires me in my portrait work. And um, as much as I love black and white film, I'm like Cheryl. I really love color, and um, I love you know. I mean, I try to get that film noir effect, but in color, <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I think my my portrait work has really taken on a whole different look in the past five years um, because it has been very um, subtle colors. Um, when I was working analog, you know, and I printed everything in black and white and hand colored. And you know, it was it was a beautiful look, and I did it for years and years. But now I'm working um, with digital and uh, color photography, and then I I rework the images on the computer. So um, a lot of it is uh, digital manipulation, and mm -hmm. um, so it has a, it, it has a very richer richer color. But it also has um, a, a subtlety to it. it I, I don't know how to describe it. Um, you know, it the like the tomboy picture, which I, I you don't have for for this talk, but it, it's inspired by like nineteen fifties book covers, which are very illustrative, and um, the color scheme is taken from that. Um, so yeah, the point of all of this is that no, I don't work every day unless I'm out, like just sort of snap shooting with my iPhone, you know, and 
you know, something catches my eye. But um, yeah, I, it's, it's a scheduled sitting down portrait session um, happens, you know, like once every four months or something, you know, it's, it's not real frequent. But I would imagine that you have to have an eye for the photograph. And that's um, evident in some of the past of the pictures that we're going to look at today. You saw somebody and said, wait, I need, we need a picture. So that, you know, that's a skill that one has to hone, I would imagine, if one were a photographer. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting, you know, because like the the picture of um one of the pictures that we're gonna show for this talk, um, Shelby in her garden. I went to her house for another for an interview actually about Wow, and uh, she's such an interesting woman. And I I said, okay, I'll do the interview, but you have to sit for me. <laughs> you know for a portrait it was it was just a really good exchange you know and um it you know it just worked out beautifully I, I love those portraits of her so Cheryl do you work every day um I have a, a sad studio schedule because I also own a bookkeeping and consulting business that's the civilian job so oh. I yeah, so Monday and Tuesday, I'm in the studio. Wednesday through Friday, I've got to do the civilian job. And I'm also, I describe it like this. I would say I try to, um, the official practice in the studio is Monday and Tuesday, but I'm also trying to engage every every day. I mean, sometimes it's, I I need to, kind of kickstart my sketching practice again, but I was doing that several times a week as well. So there's always something going on and I'm gonna regard the way, the the looking, because uh, I mean, that is, uh, that is clearly a practice, just the way of looking. So I'm going to I'm going to expand your work schedule there Eva and say you are working we're working every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm going to yes. expand there. I, I like to so, I like to but, think that my addiction to movies is, you know, of course, oh all like part of my work process. <laughs> it's all, you know, it's absolutely all of it is part of it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like my sister all, would say, maybe you can deduct it from your taxes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh, you should. You should. I can help you with that. She's always I thought of that too. Change <laughs> the season. Yeah. <laughs> One more question before we go to the exhibit. Uh, how has the place you live in now influenced your work? Who's taking um, it? <laughs> you've lived around different places. Cheryl, you take it. Um, okay, I would say uh, in terms of living here, I well, for one thing, I would say the affordability of being having physical space, you know, as compared to living in a, a tighter city where the scale of affordability shifts tremendously. So just the the actual practicality of going, okay, there's a little bit more affordability here, so therefore I can get a studio, which is absolutely determined where I've lived in my life. So that's that's a whole lot of it. But um, yeah, I would say, um, I bet that's a whole bunch of that. Oh, oh, gallery relationships here in terms of being able to kind of have a, certain type of extroversion and speak with people within the culture that I, you know, am very familiar with and in terms of just kind of an extroverted kind of friendliness that one can get away with here that's rather informal in the in Texas, I think that's that's reasonable. At least that's my observation. It's less formalized. Mm -hmm. So that allows me to kind of kickstart opportunity a little bit better or faster. 
kind of community. Yeah, yeah. The well, it's it, it huge. Mm -hmm. It's driving so many people out of urban areas. You know, not that um, Austin isn't an urban area. I love Austin, by the way. Oh, well, it misses you then. <laughs> So should we turn to the exhibit and let me uh, tell our read, uh, share with our, your epigraph for the exhibit is from Carl Jung, which I love. Uh, let me read it if I may. Synchronicity is the experience of two or more events that are casually unrelated or unlikely to occur by chance, yet are experienced as occurring together in a meaningful manner. So that's a very fitting description. You continue. This is a joint statement, I believe, that you wrote. Finn, Frock, and Weiss were happily surprised by the striking resemblances and specific images captured by Weiss's camera and depicted in Finn, Frock's paintings. With a closer examination, they realized that this was more than just a chance happening. The works of Diane Arbus, Mike Disfarmer, and Alice Neal, all of whom have influenced Finn, Frock, and Weiss have permeated their artistic styles. The discovery revealed that the similarities between their works were not coincidental, but instead an intentional manifestation of the artist's shared influences and love of portraiture. portraiture. This common ground in mind, the artist created the exhibit Synchronicity. So when is this opening and where will it occur? It's at Lincoln Penn Gallery, Saturday, the 24th of this month, here February, and it's from 5 to 7. And that's Lincoln Penn is at 2235 East 6th Street, Austin, Texas, 78202 is the zip code. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. that's very detailed. Thank you. Yes. Um, how do people who don't live in Austin, how will they get a chance to look at the material? besides on our show, in our interview? Um, I would say it, there's going to be an opportunity that we'll have the uh, later in March of doing a Zoom artist talk that is that the gallerists will have with us. Um, so we're long distance, obviously, so there'll be some Zoom involved. And we'll have this out on social media. I'm sure we'll be taking a lot of photographs, um, you know, uh, the nine of the opening and so forth. So that's great. Basically, we'll bringing that the show. That way. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, what do you think, Eva? Does that sound good? <laughs> yeah, sounds yeah. great. Yeah. We'll announce it on the show so the viewers can tune in. Sorry, I yeah, can't I think, wait to hear that. After the opening and, you know, the show has been up for a little while. I mean, I want it to be like sort of a secret until it's opened, you know? Yes. And, and then we could start posting, you know, like images that are in the show and especially the images that sort of go together, like we're going to talk about today. Um, but I, I think, you know, we should wait until after it's the show is opened. So it's sort of a surprise to people who can go. All right. Austin. Well, let's uh, let's do that now. Let's look at the first set of images um, of Lois Rollers 2014 and later that morning, side by side. Can you tell us first um, how you happen to... Well, Eva wrote me a note in which she said you just sort of discovered it by chance. Yeah. That the world just kind of kicked off your um, comparison. You, Cheryl did. Cheryl sent. We were we were communicating, just sending images back and forth, and Cheryl sent me a um, sketch of. She was working on a painting, and she sent me a sketch of uh, a painting she was going to work on, and it was a young woman with rollers in her hair. And I was like, oh my God, that's like my lowest picture with, with rollers. And I sent her, not the the one that's on the flyer, but um, the, the other iconic lowest rollers. And um, so then she said, well, I, I was 
started my portrait from the Diane Arbus photograph of the trans woman with rollers in a, his his hair. Then later on, um, Cheryl finished the painting, and um, that's that's sort of how we discovered how our work was uh, had the synchronicity. And then also the the picture of um, Shelby in the garden with her arms folded in front, and and um, and Cheryl has a painting of a young boy with his arms folded in front. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's another set of images too of painting and um, Daniel uh, Allen and yeah and uh, his last thread hmm? yes Correct. yes yes and so well let's go back this uh, Lois Rollers 2014 is kind of an elaboration or a later development of your earlier. Um, yes. For, that appears in another pairing. Yes. Right. Set of images. And if you wouldn't mind uh, each of you telling us a little bit about how they originated and the commonalities between them, some of which are obvious. Yes. Um, well, so, Lois Rollers 2014, Eva. Yes, that was, um, it was an answer to, um, Lois Rollers 1984, which is sort of an iconic photograph of mine. And um, we did a show uh, later called Desperate Archives and Split Bridges wanted me to re-photograph, um, sort of imitate the images that I did back in the 80s. And so I re-photographed Lois in 2014. And um, that's what this image is. And when Cheryl and I were sharing images, I saw a sketch of hers that was for this painting. Um, and I was like, oh my God, you know, it's so similar to my Lois in the rollers. And um, I think it was a sketch that I saw. And then right. we we realized that the synchronicity of that. And then she finished the painting and it was just a marvelous thing of how our two images went together. And um, so this is the result of the pairing of those two images. And we ended up using it for our card for the uh, synchronicity of the show. And um, Cheryl, do you have anything else to say? Well, yeah, I mean, it was, it really was kind of a, amazing having been influenced by having similar loves, you know, Diane Arbus, for example, uh, and uh, having done uh, like a sketch of this and then you've got this, you, I mean, we're just like right there hand in hand. And then I took my sketch and went ahead and made a painting and so forth. It was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was it. That it was I thought it. And we didn't know it. <laughs> it's called Later That Morning. And it's yeah. 12 by 12 acrylic on clay board. Correct. All right. Should we go, go to the next? Yes. Okay. Let me, I'm taking this one down. Here we go. Now, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I think um, the title is really very striking um, of the, is this, his words fell off the paper and the coffee ground them. Um, actually, this one is his last thread. This, this oh, sorry. particular one. Oh, no worries. And Eva, what's the title of your painting, of your photo? I never, I never realized that that was the title of the painting, Cheryl. What is it, The Last Thread? His yes. last thread, his oh, last. wow, that's yeah. amazing. I mean, awesome. you, you know, we didn't know each other at this time, this is, no, no. I'm signing off on this painting in 2021, we never met. <laughs> You've been on <laughs> Facebook and, you know, the, the similarities in terms of just the feeling is like so straight up there. That's what, that's my sense of it. 
Well, I mean, it's a, it's even more right now. I'm like sort of like my mind is blown because what, uh -huh. the, the title of your painting, because I never shared this with you, Cheryl, but um, this is a portrait of my my very, very dearest friend, Danny Allen, who um, was a, an amazing artist and painter and um, one of my best friends back in Rochester, and we lost him to suicide. Um, oh my God. Yeah, so your title of your painting, <laughs> it's just like, oh my God, the last thread, you know, I mean, he died, you know, within a month that I took this photograph of him. And um, he was probably on his last thread when I took it. Wow. So amazing. that's amazing, Cheryl. Well, that's yeah it's kind of spooky you and me <laughs> it is it is I, I never getting deeper i, I, I never more. shared that with you i never i you know yeah. i was going to at some point tell you that danny killed himself but i never did God, um, i'm so sorry wow yeah yeah i think about him every day he he was an amazing person and yeah. and this portrait is one of my favorite portraits that i ever did Oh, I'm sorry too. Beautiful piece. It's heavily influenced by Arbus. I mean, you could you could see. Oh yeah, that. yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. Now this is the one with the coffee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my this mistake. The His words fell off the paper. The coffee ground them clean. <laughs> right. And uh, Eva, what's the title of your photo? She'll be in the garden. Oh, right, right, right. I got a little mixed up with my titles. Um, and the painting is 30 by 24 acrylic on clay board? Correct. How did you happen to um, paint and photograph this and um, discover their commonality? I think this might be one of the first ones that we noticed. The... Started having a discussion. Yeah, yeah, it was. So the common ground is the gesture, the arms. And actually with the, my painting, I had to, uh, uh, for the reference of the arms, I had to go do research to figure out this one pose and so forth. And um, it, um, yeah, so I was very much engaged with the gesture of the arms on, on my side with this particular painting. It's really skillful. Um, how do you happen to include the dog? I love paintings with pets. Oh, <laughs> well, okay, this, this speaks to kind of how I work sometimes. Um, so I collect old photos like from flea markets, throw away anonymous type things. And there was this uh, kid in a, uh, a, like a school photograph, probably from the thirties or something. It was like a, a brown and white <laughs> <laughs> kind of look. And he had, the, it was really cocky kind of kid and he had his arms folded. He was a different looking person, but it was that gesture, the arms folded. So um, I, I took, that influence, which I actually start a lot of times with Procreate, which is just a iPad sketch app. And I start morphing some things together. So I also used a study of abandoned houses, all that wallpaper and that little jumper in the back and the table is, is influenced by that. And I threw my uh, photograph I'd taken from my dog and <laughs> And she used to go under the table when we first got her. And now I can see how much she's grown. She used to fit there. But I kind of morphed this narrative together. And then I use the procreate as like just something to look at, to remember what the idea was, and then begin to actually, you know, draw and then paint, et cetera. Uh, and that's kind of the the journey in terms of the line, in terms of the line to the painting of, of the work. So it kind of uh, shifts the narrative and c creates a 
completely different storyline than that one kid standing around in a school photo from the 30s. <laughs> um, but the thing um, that was interesting, I think that we both, that Eva's especially was like the arms. It's yeah. like seeing that gesture and that, that was, I'm going to digress. Okay. So right. I didn't know how to get this guy's arms in there right. I just was struggling. I was having a hard time because I changed everything and had all kinds of problems. So I'm like, okay, arms. Yeah. And in the middle of the night, I remembered this one gesture on Friends of Joey and how he was standing. And because I've watched the reruns too many times, I knew how to get back there and study that and see how this character folded his arms. God, that's just a selling point for Friends or maybe... <laughs> <laughs> really oh I'm gonna get in trouble here I know it the friends people are gonna get me no I'm kidding uh anyway so that that was the influence of trying to figure out that particular painting problem well I think it's a clear example of an image communicating silently but not necessarily quietly <laughs> <laughs> yeah at one time I was I was chatting with Cheryl and I was like just letting my imagination go crazy and I was like do you think that they know each other like <laughs> in some <laughs> other realm like these two people yeah. yeah yeah I I see the way Shelby is her stance is very different than um Cheryl's figure like his is very sort of defiant and I see her as um sort of like hugging herself, um, you know, like sort of maybe feeling a little uncomfortable that she's being photographed, you know, but then like just sort of getting into that um, self-love position, like just kind of hugging herself and and just being very thoughtful and strong. It's a very, it's it's like a very strong person. I feel like that's what she's emanating in that in that photograph, and that's to me what the arms are like, yeah. just kind of like holding herself, and you know, and sort of like self love. It's a great pairing because within the similarity, there is a little contrast. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're talking to each other. Yeah, that's what yeah. I that's yeah, what I said. Do you think that they know each other in this other dimension? I, I would say in the painting, this guy is more, he's waiting, he's defended, he's protective. It's it's kind of got that feeling to it. And uh like you say, the idea of self-love with a kind of self-hug almost is really uh I mean it's quite beautiful. It's quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, so such a great photo. Thank you. I think Shelby will be very happy to hear what we've said about her photograph. <laughs> yeah. <We'll laughs> <Do you> know <laughs> her? <laughs> what was that? Do you know her? Can you report to her? Well, she'll see the interview. <laughs> 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 and then she'll be very happy. Uh, no, it was the no, spray. That's it. We are spray. So, okay, well, that. On that note, I will uh, give you back your screen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was really um, informative display. And um, I have two more closing questions. Uh, first of all, what are each of you, what are your current projects? Hmm. What am I working on? I've just been working on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's um, it is kind of the the work for this show, and now we're into that leg of past making the work to okay, getting the work, and then hanging the work and doing that piece of it. Yeah, yeah, I've been sort of at a standstill with um with my work because I haven't had a printer and I just got a new printer that I've been printing the whole show with. And so I'm getting into 
uh, working on uh, images that I just haven't worked on because I didn't have a printer. So um, that's what I'm working on right now is things that I have shot that I haven't had a chance to print. So that'll that'll be a pro the next project. <laughs> well, what what uh, validatory remarks do you want to share with the audience? It's been a real pleasure talking to you, and as always, I've learned a lot about technology <laughs> as well as <laughs> art and photography. Um, I just have to say it's it's just been such a pleasure working with Cheryl. Um, I just I enjoy her so much as a friend and as an artist and. Um, you know, it's, this whole experience of having this show with her has just been very gratifying. And, um, you know, I just, we just discovered so much about each other as artists. And um, I'm just very grateful that she reached out to me and organized this whole thing. So I, I just get a really good feeling about it. It's, it's just been really wonderful. So thank you, Cheryl. My God, thank you. Thank you for being <laughs> willing to do this and come all the way out here. <laughs> Look forward to meeting you actually in person. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if y'all can hear that lovely little beep in the background. Lynn is cooking pizza and uh, the little alarming thing. There's some ventilation that needs to happen. It's all completely chaotic here. <laughs> Well, chaos is wonderful. It's sort of an artistic predisposition. Yeah, that's what's happening right now. Yes, yes. So, uh, yeah, and on my part, one of the things that's been super exciting for me, working with you, Eva, besides our friendship and, and the artistry and so forth, is like this kind of this lovely affirmation of portraiture. Just like, oh, yeah great you know to have this opportunity to work with somebody who's in it because it's um you know it's sometimes for me as a painter kind of tricky to figure out how much can i have the the portraiture occupy the picture plane and so forth so it's uh it's a pleasure to go hey guess what this shows about that get feel free so that's been very exciting for me i love mm -hmm. the idea of artists collaborating women artists in particular they definitely should come to see the show well this has been lovely thank you both um thank you Anne. Thank we you. really appreciate it we learned a lot and it's expanded my mind certainly and i'm sure it will expand the audience's minds as well so eva weiss and Cheryl Finfrock, Finfrock, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to see you again. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, remember, resist.